We're now going to get into the heart of the class, which is looking at very simple C code and seeing the assembly instructions that it generates. So here we have something that's utterly trivial, just main calls a function, function just returns a hard-coded constant, and then we don't actually even do anything with that return address, and main returns some other hard-coded constant. So what gets generated for this? Here's the assembly, and it looks like we have five completely new assembly instructions that we need to learn about. The first one, call. Call's job is to transfer control to a different function in a way that the control can later be resumed where it left off. So basically, it's going to push the address of the next instruction onto the stack. So implicitly, that push is going to move RSP down by 8. And so that's going to serve as what we call the return address, which will be used by the return instruction in order to get back to the calling function. So I mentioned that in the stack section, return addresses are one of the things that end up on the stack. After the return address is pushed into the stack by the call assembly instruction, it changes RIP, the really long instruction pointer, to the address that's given in the instruction. So that's going to be the address of the target function that you want to call. Now the destination address can actually be specified in multiple ways. It could be an absolute address or it could be a relative address, which could either be relative to the end of the call instruction or it could be relative to some completely different register. So we're not exactly going to care about these. You're not going to really see the differences between the encoding for the most part. But later on, when we talk about assembly instruction encoding, or if, and uh, if you happen to be you know, hard coding some assembly yourself, then you'll certainly care about how exactly targets of call assembly instructions are encoded. So perfectly balanced, the call has its own return. There are two forms of return. The first one just basically pops the top of the stack, whatever is on top of the stack at the time that the ret instruction is called, that's going to go back into RIP. And of course, because it's popping implicitly, pop is going to increment the stack pointer RSP by eight. So basically whatever's on the stack, stick it in RIP and RSP plus eight. There's also another form of pop that you will see less frequently where it can essentially do the same thing as that, but then you can actually also specify some number of bytes that you want also added to RSP. So instead of just popping one thing off the top of the stack, it's like pop it off the top of the stack, put it in RIP, and then go ahead and add an extra eight bytes to RSP, add an extra 20 bytes. Like I said, you won't see this as much, but there is a particular uh, way of calling functions that's used by Windows APIs. And so if you ever start disassembling Windows APIs, you will potentially see this type of assembly instruction. Now, before we get to the next instruction, we have to talk about how Intel versus AT&T syntax deal with two operand instructions. So in Intel syntax, two operand instructions have the sources on the right and the destinations on the left. So Windows uses this form. Typically, Windows tends to use Intel assembly and things like Unixes tend to use AT&T assembly syntax. So sources on the right, destinations on the left, you can think of this kind of like C programming or algebra where you have stuff over here and it goes into the thing on the left. So if I show you a move RSP to RBP, if I show you an instruction move and two operands, you don't necessarily know which way it's going, except that I'm telling you if you're in Intel syntax, it's going from the right to the left. So this would take the register RSP and put the value into RBP. Add, you know, we haven't covered these assembly instructions yet, but you know, just add is going to take RSP plus 14, and then it's going to put it back into RSP. So even though there's kind of two assembly instructions, this is both a source and a destination. All right, AT&T syntax, it's the opposite direction. So elementary school, one plus two equals three. So again, move RSP, RBP, you have no way to implicitly know what the direction is of here, other than that I'm telling you, if it's AT&T syntax, it's moving from the left to the right, move RSP to RBP. Also, you'll see that registers get a percent sign uh, prefix in front of them. So you know, like, okay, that's register, that's register. And immediates, those constant values, get a dollar sign prefix in front of them. So in this class, I'm going to prefer Intel syntax, even though I originally learned 
AT&T syntax, but it's important for you to know both. And you know, we'll cover AT&T and Intel syntax more later on, but you need to know both because essentially, you know, per one of the reasons why should you learn assembly, because people giving talks might be showing you some assembly to try to make a point, you don't get to choose how the particular person giving the talk is going to put it in Intel or AT&T syntax. So you gotta be able to read both to understand what they're saying. So the move instruction has many different forms. It can move from one register to the next register. It can take memory and put it into a register. It can take register and put it into memory. And it can take an immediate value and put it into a register or immediate value into memory. But the form you don't see here is memory to memory. So move does not support memory to memory transfers. And whenever I talk about memory up here in the possible forms, memory addresses are always given in RMX forms. So for instance, I said it can put an immediate into memory. So that would be like an immediate value and stick it into a memory address. Intel can't actually support 64-bit immediate values when moving into memory, but it can support 64-bit immediate values when moving into a register. So here we have, you know, the various forms of RMX that we saw before. We said it does register to memory or memory to register. So Intel syntax, register, the source operand goes on the right side, the destination operand on the left side. So register to memory or memory as specified in RMX form on the right side to register the destination and register to register. Then we have the add and subtract assembly instructions, which of course add and subtract exactly like you would expect. Now the destination operand can be an RMX or a register. The source operand can be an RMX or a register or an immediate, but you can't have source and destination RMXs because that would allow for memory to memory, which again, we don't have memory to memory transfers moves, adds, subtracts, never memory to memory, only these other combination forms. So Intel syntax style, add RSP plus eight, takes RSP plus eight and moves it back into RSP. So again, in two operand form, this actually has source and destination, but the destination is always going to be on the left. Likewise, subtract RAX, RBX times two, it's an RMX form, which is going to take RBX, multiply it by two, treat it as a memory address, grab a value from that memory address, add it to RAX, and then put it back into, sorry, subtract it from RAX, and then put the value back into RAX. 